All right. What I'd like to talk about today is plugins and how to utilize them for voiceover. Uh, I use a number of plugins in my voiceover sessions to just tidy things up so that I can send out clean audio. And that doesn't include room tone for me. I don't think it's relevant. I never get asked for it. I don't record audiobooks, so that's probably why. <laughs> Um, so let me just basically run down what I use. Now, I use essentially four things. Now, the first thing I do is I apply a de -esser. Now, it is actually almost never used for my voice. I don't have a particularly sibilant voice, so that's not a problem. I just put it on there. You know, it's transparent, the audio passes through it, and it, make, it doesn't degrade the sound in any way. So it just is a catch-all, really. Um, and that goes up. It doesn't attenuate anything below 12.2K, which, you know, really doesn't matter. So you can see there, if you look on the screen, it slightly caught some of those S's and T's. Just takes a little edge off. Now, the next thing I use is a gate. Now, this is a, tach, a touch controversial. <laughs> um, now, you can see as I stop talking, the gate closes. Now, I don't see any benefit in, in the room tone, in using, utilizing room tone, because, you know, you're just going to, it's just going to be white noise and rumble. And I live in New York City, so there's also going to be potentially like, trucks idling outside and, and things like that and so all those sounds I either EQ out in fact I do EQ those out or I gate them out um, now you have to be very careful with a gate a tech, uh, setting your attack and release times that that has to be as unnoticeable as possible and then at that point uh, once you've set the attack and release and then how steep that that cutoff is um, you setting with the, the ratio then you're adjusting the threshold so at which point you want there to be silence what you consider a relevant silence point um, I'm not going to go into detail with that but that's basically how I use it now I've been in discussions with <laughs> various people online and in person uh, about noise cancelling uh, plugins primarily the Waves NS1. Now, that thing, I don't know exactly what it's doing to the audio. You don't, it doesn't tell you. I haven't looked into it. All I do know is that it, it doesn't just turn down your volume when there's a particular silence section that you've predefined. It degrades your audio. It is using some kind of subtractive EQ, phase inversion, something and there are artifacts all over the audio and you lose all the low end which makes me question whether or not they're using phase inversion which i think they are um phase cancellation should i say and that is processing your audio and i just think it sounds horrible so um i would not recommend waves ns1 despite the fact that lots of people do the stock avid gate which is what i'm using here it comes free with pro tools and it just does the job all right <clears throat> this is my primary and only eq as you can see here what i'm actually doing is i'm using subtractive eq mainly with a little boost in the high end now the very low uh stuff i just get rid of Below 34 hertz is nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing in the human voice. And that's just to eliminate any potential, like I was talking about earlier, any trucks idling outside or buses or, or any like an earthquake or something. Um, none of my voice is being attenuated with anything around that frequency there. Um, I'm also pulling down, you know, 0.3 of a dB. It's nothing at 75 ish um, now these other frequencies that you can see here um, I have located a frequency at 119.3 uh, Hertz that I didn't like I made it a tight Q which is the uh, the shape of the uh, boost or cut and then I've pulled it down by 3.6 DB 
and I've done the same thing at 538.3 hertz, 2.3 hertz, and I've boosted a little bit at you know 6k. I should have said 2.3k hertz there. I can't remember if I said that or not. Now you'll you'll be able to hear it in a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to record some audio and then I'm going to mute my microphone that I'm speaking to you now, and then I'll. Uh, engage it and then bypass it so you can hear the difference you know really the boost is almost negligible you know 1.6 db up there it makes a little sweetening effect has a little sweetening effect but really it's the cutting getting rid of the frequencies that is having the most impact next thing is the stock avid compressor now this one really here i'm just using it to boost up the gain a little bit um as you can see it's not compressing at all <laughs> in fact I think that one this this is more on the cusp so if I just speak a bit louder you can see a teeny bit there um, it's more noticeable when I'm yelling and screaming in here um, it's just catching it and pulling it down I really do not apply a lot of compression because when I deliver the audio um, that's really the audio editor's job so I'm just making it a little bit flatter and um, that's all really I mean I'm, anything more than 3 dBs would be hugely excessive in my opinion of compression and then the final stage is a limiter on my master bus now you won't see it move at all right now because this level is quite low um, once I've done a bit of processing and boosting with the compression, the level goes up a bit. So my threshold of minus 6.5 dB is around about when I'm really like yelling and screaming. Um, that's pulling it down fairly significantly. And I've got a ceiling of minus 2 dB. So it doesn't get even close to uh, 0 dB and digital clipping. Um, it will never get anywhere near it. So I also make sure the dither is not on because um, I export at the same settings as my session, which is 24-bit 48K, when I'm exporting WAV or AIFF files. And when I encode to MP3, the encoder has a dither in it, so I don't need to do that. Okay, and that is basically the rundown of all my plugins. Nothing fancy little bit of DSing, a very judicious use of the gate and subtractive EQ, light compression and a little bit of limiting. And that's it, really. I don't think anything else needs to really uh, be applied. Any other sweetening or you know subtracting of EQs can be done by the editor. It just tightens things up. All right, let me record a bit of audio. I don't know what I'm going to say, I'm just going to wing it. So I'm going to mute my mic, record some audio, and you can hear it back. This is a test of the audio and the presets that I use with my Pro Tools setup. I use a Deessa, a Gate, the seven band EQ that comes with Pro Tools, a compressor, and the limiter, the Maxim limiter that comes with Pro Tools. So let's hear a before and after. Okay, so that was me making a bit of a mess of it, but <laughs> uh, right now I commit the cardinal sin of having my laptop in the booth with me because I just like to have a computer here and I want to control everything from here because I'm a control freak. <laughs> um, so the fan's on because I'm screen sharing, uh, so it's a little noisy in here right now. Um, not necessarily always the case. Um, so let me just highlight a section and we'll play that back I use a Deessa, a gate the seven band EQ that comes with Pro Tools a compressor and the limiter the Maxim limiter that comes with I use a all right fine so I'm gonna just keep that looping and I'm going to turn off all the plugins and reapply them one stage at a time sometimes I'll just maybe put one in and then one out and you can hear the difference they all make. All right, here we go. I use a Deessa, a Gate, the seven band EQ that comes with Pro Tools, 
uh, compressor and the limiter, the Maxim limiter that comes with. I use a Deessa, a Gate, the seven band EQ that comes with Pro Tools, a compressor and the limiter, the Maxim limiter that comes with. I use a Deessa, a Gate, the seven band EQ that comes with Pro Tools, a compressor and the limiter, the Maxim limiter that comes with. I use a Deessa, a Gate, the seven band EQ that comes with Pro Tools, a compressor and the limiter, the Maxim limiter that comes with. I use a Deessa, a Gate, the seven band EQ that comes with Pro Tools, a compressor and the limiter, the Maxim limiter that comes with. I use a DS. Okay, so I'd like you to hear the difference that the EQ makes. It's sub subtractive EQ. Uh, it loses some of the muddiness. It becomes a lot clearer to my ears and just will cut through in a mix much better. And again, making sure that you notice the fact that I'm cutting rather than boosting and not cutting by a lot, under 4 dB across the board. So, um, a little boost of you know less than 2 dB for the high end and I think it makes quite a drastic difference so let's have a listen. I use a Deessa, a Gate, the 7 band EQ that comes with Pro Tools, a compressor and the limiter, the Maxim limiter that comes with. I use a Deessa, a Gate, the 7 band EQ that comes with Pro Tools, a compressor and the limiter, the Maxim limiter that comes with. So it's let me mute this okay um it's boxier i think with the without the eq in there i lose some of the boxiness which is probably the around the uh probably the 538 hertz is the boxiness um so uh yeah anyway that was a good demonstration of my pro tool setup uh light processing on both the DSing, the gate, the EQ, the compression, and the limiter. Um, I didn't turn the limiter on and off because this is the limiter we're going to do. Um, so yeah, that's my setup and thought it would be interesting for you to see it. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.